Clients often feel worried about coming into a first psychotherapy session because they're fearful of being ashamed. So what is shame? Shame is a deep sense of humiliation. It's a feeling that you've done something wrong or improper. You've transgressed some sort of boundary and it's been found out that somehow you've let yourself down and everybody's going to know about it. And it's a feeling that's held deeply in the body. So we might say that I wish the ground had opened. The feeling is you want to get rid of the whole body because it's so overwhelming, the humiliation that's flooding you. And we might cover our faces in shame, a sort of hiding from the world because we can't bear the thought of being seen as faulty or less good than we hoped we would be. And psychotherapists sometimes think of shame as the shortfall between the idealised self that we'd like to project out onto the world and have everyone believe in and the real self which sits deep inside us and somehow that shortfall has been exposed. So why do we feel shame? What purpose does it serve? So shame has an evolutionary purpose. It helps the species to survive because it helps us all conform to cultural values and to follow laws and it keeps the society bound together because we can all agree on what might be a boundary that we shouldn't transgress. So when we use the word shameless about somebody it's a pejorative term and we would probably be quite wary of somebody who had absolutely no shame. It makes us feel discomforted because it threatens the group, it threatens the community. So how does shame affect us? So shame sits on a spectrum. So shame might be a transitory feeling that comes in when you feel that you've done something wrong or you wish that you'd done something differently. It makes you wince but it's not something that holds you up or gets in the way of you living your life. But shame can be more deeply held than that, and then it can become quite self-destructive. So, for example, people who have been sexually assaulted or have been sexually abused as children often feel a deep sense of shame. And the shame can be defining. The shame becomes a part of the core self and the person may think, I am shameful. And this can be very self-destructive. Given that therapy by its nature is sitting in front of another person and talking about private parts of the self, there is an understandable fear that clients may have of feeling ashamed because by its very nature, therapy is exposing. But your therapist is not there to judge you or to criticise you. Therapy is a collaborative process and your therapist will be working with you in a safe and secure way, establishing trust before any of the therapeutic work that might involve shame and symptoms of shame is brought into the room. And it's also important to remember that therapy goes at your own pace. Your therapist will be tracking you and keeping alongside you, not forcing you to do anything that you don't want to do or talk about things you don't want to talk about. Therapy isn't like the medical model. If you were going to a GP consultation, for example, there might be an urgency to um, tell the GP about all of your symptoms as quickly as possible so that the GP can make a, a diagnosis with all of the facts um, that are available. But therapy has time and therapy is about building trusting relationships. So therapy is about helping the client to heal and repair the shame of the past. It's about helping them to manage when they might feel otherwise flooded with shame, to take some sort of control over that. Because shame isn't a thing. It's a story that we tell ourselves about ourselves, And as such, therapy can help clients to rewrite that narrative and to make their own stories.